Start the button too soon, and there they go up, and then they do one of these. <laughs> yeah, you set the whole thing off into motion. Okay, we're gonna get started here. And for everybody who's just curious, my range for the ball is about this far. <laughs> so if you're behind that, you're less likely to get hit. Not that I can't move off the podium, but you're a little less likely to get hit. So if you disagree with anything I say, grab a ball, chuck it up here. I might throw it back. I'm good with that. So I'm Adam Johnson, and there's somebody back there who's smiling way too much. So. And I'm going to be talking about Zeus and inside the command and control server for Zeus, and what is it that the cyber criminals have? What can they do with it? Do we really have to be concerned? Is this just another, you know, virus, whatever? But first I want to, you know, what is Zeus? So, first thing I did is, you know, go to the great, awesome place of all wisdom, Wikipedia, and said, okay, show me what Zeus is, and they kind of came up with this as their first sentence. You know, so the various names for it, but is a Trojan horse that steals banking information by keystroke logging and form grabbing. Yeah, that's awesome, you know, that's great, that's a good description of what it did back when it came out, and it came out in about, oh, 2007. And we've progressed way past that, the tools progressed way past that, and there's a lot more capabilities in Zeus now than what is indicated up there. And that's what we want to talk about today. Why, what is Zeus? Why do we have to take it seriously? And Mostly, what can we do about it? And that last piece, uh, we might get to that. Let's just get a good look at the tool. What are the hackers using? What are they doing? So, why do I care about Zeus? The 80% is my number. I got it from going to Virus Total back in the, I don't know, May time frame. I created a brand new Zeus bot using their builder. I submitted it to Virus Total. I went through 42-ish antivirus engines. And at that time, it came back that 40% of vendors were able to catch this as a virus and perceivably do something about it. So that left this big gap of 60%. Well, in preparing for this talk, I did this this week and also last week, and just under 80% of antivirus vendors can detect it. There's still about 20% of the vendors out there that can. And now the source code for the builder and all that stuff has been publicly available for six months. And I have less voice. Yeah, six months. And I have less voice, so microphone number two. Number two. Huh. All right, back. <laughs> so, wow, that's loud. 80% of vendors now are catching it. The great thing is a lot of the major vendors do get it. You know, it's a lot of the smaller ones that are still missing it. Most, not all. If your antivirus vendor, for instance, happens to represent a canary, you might want to be concerned because twice now I've created a new bot and their signatures were not able to identify. So it's still out there, it's still in the wild, it's still being used, and it's still really a benchmark of what the typical online banking Trojan does. There are a lot newer, better, less detected tools, such as SpyEye out there, which do a great job of evading detection. Why, but the techniques that they're using are very, very similar. And that also brings into, well, are their techniques really that distinct, that difficult? 
Well, you do some type of social engineering of phishing, spear phishing maybe, email with an attachment, um, some type of maybe Flash or Adobe vulnerability that you're using to go grab an executable, bring it down, run it on the machine, and then have some control of the machine. That's what Zeus is trying to do. Well, you start looking at some of the reports that came out of the RSA breach. Well, what happened? Well, spear phishing email with a... I, mean, I think that one had a new O-date in it for Flash inside of Excel. But really the same attack vector that was being used in the RSA for that initial, you know, coming on in is being used by the bank of Trojans. So it's a lot of the same techniques you're going to see over and over again. It's just kind of the state of the virus industry. So what are we going to look at today? You know, why are we here? Zeus is old. You know, like I said, it's from 2007 initially. Why do we even still care about it? Most vendors can kick it out. Well, what we're going to be talking about is not really on, um, hey, I'm the victim, or this is in my organization, or that side of thing. We want to be the bot master. We want to go through the server installation. We want to build our own bots. We want to distribute that bot, talk about the distribution mechanism of Zeus or lack thereof. And we also want to know, hey, what can we do with this thing once it's on somebody's desktop? Are we really limited just to form grabbing, grabbing banking credentials and shipping them out? And we're also going to be talking about Back Connect and the Back Connect server. Really cool piece of technology. Um, if you're familiar with the Netcat gender bender, it's a very, very polished version of that. If you're not, we'll get into it. So basically what we're at is how do the bad guys use Zeus? It's what we're not looking at. We're not looking at the host infected machine as much as we can infect one. We, we, I don't care about that today. You know, if I'm the bad guy, it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna talk about cleaning instructions. If you need to have cleaning instructions, you know, do the generic, just re-image the box, everything's gone. We're not gonna go into reverse engineering and find out, okay, well, how does the protocols actually communicate here, and how can I reverse this? And no, that's not gonna be in this conversation. So, we're just looking at, hey, what does it take to run this control server? There's been a lot of talk, I've seen a lot of screenshots, but that doesn't really give you a good feel for what does it look like? How do you use it? How responsive is it? So we're going to talk about that a little bit. And yeah, we're not going to talk about how to actually commit a crime if you get that, you know, um, you're on your own on that one. Um, yeah. So what is a Zeus command and control server implementation look like? Well, first, obviously, you need a computer. It doesn't matter, it can be Linux, it can be Windows, whatever you have handy, it's good. But you need an HTTP server. Okay, that's easy. Go install IIS server on your Windows box and you're there. You need to install PHP. Okay, that's a download, that's easy. Zend Optimizer, download, easy. MySQL, same thing, that's just a download, it's pretty easy. I mean, this is all bread and butter setting up a website. And there's also some various registries, keys, tweaks, settings, uh, file permissions, some things you have to go through there. One of the most handy things that you can have is the Zeus user guide. And to be honest, this user guide is actually more useful than some security vendors user guides. It's, a, it's easier to understand at times, and it has detailed instructions, and it works. I just wish a lot of my security vendors could achieve that great milestone of good documentation. So, you know, if you'll just glance at this, and by the way, right there, that HTTP link, the paste, html.com, whatever, that has this out there. It's a quick Google search. Just search, you know, Zeus user guide. It's out there. It's available. Same with the implement, the install for Zeus. If you want to play around with it at home, absolutely. You know, go have fun. Infect your own machines. Don't infect others. That would be, you know, illegal, questionable, flexible morals and ethics. And I don't really condone doing that. So, what do we have going on now? 
Um, we do the install, we install those applications, we get our web server up and running, we got our database, and the first thing that we do is, once everything's up and running, we go to this URL, and that configures the link from the web server into the database automatically for you. To be honest, it is a simple, simple install. And right now, we're going through the PowerPoints, and I said this was going to be a low PowerPoint, so I hope to be off of these pretty quickly, and we're going to be going into VM. And I think I made the appropriate sacrifices for the demons of live demonstration that they are not going to completely and totally trash this talk. So, out of the user guide, here's my favorite quote. Basically, it's saying, yeah, after you're done, remove the install directory so you can kind of harden this. And there's also like, you know, okay, here's the file permissions that you want to have in there so people can't go in and do bad stuff to your command and control server. There's, well, you don't want to have your command and control server on. That's just embarrassing. <laughs> and to that end, we're going to take a look at this file right here, the systemconfig.php file. It's a really nice file that if you are able, because somebody did appropriately harden their server, it tells you some really cool information. So enough of these PowerPoints. Let's try and see this thing. You're and this is just... Ooh, that's ugly. Oh well, we'll look at you work with that. This is a Windows 7 box that is just pretty basic. IIS was installed on it, MySQL, PHP, all the stuff that we had just talked about. It's all already in here. So what are the first steps that we're going to be doing? Well, we've installed it. We need to configure the database. And we're gonna, let's first take a look at some of the files. So when you download Zeus, so you get this nice little zip file. This just has the builder, which is to build the bot. There's another folder, there's a server, there's a server PHP, the server PHP ser um, folder is where all the website pages are that you're just gonna take all of this and you're gonna just copy it right down to your local drive, pub, dub, 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 root, and here we go. So what we want to do, basic installation, here's the files, yay, looks nice. There's an install directory. This is the one that you're going to want to remove after it's all nicely installed and do your hard before. So we're going to pop into this, and I said that there's a nice config.php server, which is not in the install directory. It's in the system directory. And config.php, let's pop that on open. And what do we have in the config PHP file? Hey, MySQL host, user, password, Gurkhan, yay. Um, where do you want reports going? And oh yeah, your botnet encryption key. All very, very great stuff. So this is a really nice, wonderful file to have. But how do we come up with this <coughs> file? Let's go ahead and close that. I'm just gonna rename. Uh, old. Yes. Okay, so now we don't have a config.php file. Now let's go do our install. Now I am not attached to the internet. I do not want to connect because I know where I am. That's right. <laughs> so this is your first initial screen that you're going to get into. You're going to set your admin password. You're going to set your MySQL server. And it's very much just that easy. So what do I want my root user password to be? Uh, let's just go Gurkhan. All right, my password for my MySQL database, also Gurkhan, because I'm not very original and I don't know better. And Gurkhan for the encryption key. And let's uh, also write our report files directly to the hard drive, just make it easy. We click install, and now it makes a nice, beautiful config.php file that allows me to have my web server linked to the database server. As soon as it's done, it's going to come back and it's going to have all the nice green tags saying, hey, this was successful and wonderful. And don't you just love live demos because they always go much quicker at home. See, there we go. Installation complete. No errors. That simple. So from there, 
we have a web server, we have our command and control software installed, we can go in and remove the install directory at this point if we want. But we don't have a bot yet. We want to create our bot. Does anybody want to create a bot? No? All right. So, IP config. What is my IP address? Okay, my IP, IP address is 192.168.85.129. I'm working in VMware in host only mode, so my VMware can talk to each other and they can't talk to anything outside my machine. Basic, you know, you are handling malware. You are going to have an infection here if you install it. Be smart, be safe. So do it in VM, take a snapshot beforehand, and then be done. So what do we need to build the bot? Well, here we've got the builder. We have a couple of different files. There's a config.txt file, a web injects file, and ZSB, which is the Zeus builder.exe. The config.txt file is where you're going to specify a lot of the information. So hey, you know, we've got some build time information. What's great is that each bot you make, you can give it a different botnet name. So I want to create a botnet referred to as Gurkhan. So I want to connect to here, to my command and control server. I know that, hey, this is the Gurkhan bot. You know, I use this one to target the guys at Gurkhan. And then let's say I want to build another bot. And I want to say, OK, well, who else in the area, what major companies are there? Um, as I kick the table. Well, DeVos Place, let me make a DeVos Place botnet, and I can distribute that bot to target that one group, and we can keep our targeted attacks separated. Nice, handy. The other items to know, and you'll see here that I have one for the timer config, timer logs, timer stats. By default, that is typically 60 minutes. So what that means is your bot is going to phone home once every 60 minutes. We're working in a lab environment. I don't feel like waiting around for an hour. You guys don't either. We set it to one. So where is our config.bin file? Well, what's the config.bin? Well, that tells you how to configure the bot. And we'll be building that in just a minute. Other useful information in here is the URL loader, the bot.exe is the exe, the gate.bin is where it talks back to the command and control server, the web injects is for what banks you're going to scam or what websites you want to go. So when we go into the web injects folder, what we see is, all right, who are we going to target today? Eagle, sure, sounds good. Wells Fargo, yep, that's one's built in there. Um, anybody want to go banking at Fifth Third that's in there, PayPal's in there, U.S. Bank's in there. You get the idea. It's already built with a lot of bank website information already in. But you can just edit this file and create your own. A little bit more difficult, but once again, there's this really handy user's guide that tells you how, exactly how to do it. So you can make it, you know, so hey, you want to target this company's over here, so they're mail server and you know their mail server where they put that you can put that in there um, let's say there's a bank in there that you don't want and you want to inject an additional field into their system and say hey you need to put in your user ID your password and now you need to put in your ATM's pin number yeah that's where you do it that's where you configure it so let's go build a bot here we have the Zeus builder and it's Pretty straightforward information. This is the version that it is. Let's put an encryption key in. Vircon. We have, where's our config.txt file? Well, hey, I put it right there. Easy. Settings. Do you want it in English or Russian? Yeah, Russian. Great. That'd be awesome. So let's build our bot. This is going to build a bot that the MB5 is going to be different potentially than any other bot that's out there. It's going to be fresh. It's going to be new. The builder takes care of doing that. Here we have the config.bin, which says, OK, here's a configuration file of how you're going to talk to me. Let's save that off. So there's our config.bin. And here's our bot.exe. Build successful. Great. 
So now we have our bot file. The bot is one new piece of code that you're going to install. The config.bin is going to reside on your web server, and you're going to use that to tell it how to talk to you. And that config.bin file is encrypted. So it doesn't necessarily easily just, oh, hey, there's a config.bin. Let's take that and cough it up. You know, what does this mean? Where, what's in there? So that's the builder. We just built our first bot. Anybody here built a bot before? Me? Me? OK. It's easy to create a brand new bot. And once again, if we take this and we just go and run it through virus total, run it through the 42 antivirus engines, you're going to come up with a report saying, hey, about 28% of them didn't pass it. And you're going to say, hey, I'm a brilliant hacker. I'm going to go see that what company's website and see who their reference accounts are, because we're just evil like that. So another reason not to be a reference account for your antivirus vendor. So we have our custom created bot. It was out in our directory. And we're going to just take that, the config.bin, the bot.exe, and we're going to copy them over to our web server. Copy, and then select the right folder. Get off, C drive, find a pub, and paste. I had another version out there. Copy and replace, copy and replace. You need admin privileges. Yeah, I have them. Don't worry about it. So here we have. Our newly configured bot that we are about ready to unleash into the world. So, what do we have within Zeus to distribute our new executable, to distribute our bot? And the answer to that is pretty much nothing. It doesn't really have a distribution mechanism. You can put them on your web server like we just did here in the demo, but you still need to drive somebody to it. You still need a delivery mechanism for that. And Zeus doesn't do that. Now, there's a lot of exploit kits out there that can. And if you want to see a real easy way to set up um, a website that can go on compromised browsers, go take a look at Metasploit and their browser autopone feature. That sets up a website has for you. You give it a port number. It's real great. You put your executable in there. It's what you want to deliver. and it will just set up all the various vulnerabilities for you. Your victim, you send to that website, and once they get to that website, it's going to just quickly ratchet through all 20 or so different browser-based vulnerabilities, flash vulnerabilities, whatever you have it can do, and try and deliver your executable. So you, at this point, you're looking at a spear phishing email saying, hey, you know what, hey, come and check out this site. It's great, it's awesome. We have free candy. Get in the van. <laughs> well, okay, we can be a little more polite than that. Does this rag smell like chloroform to you? Some of the best pickup lines that I've ever heard right there. So, let's close this down. Alright, so we've set up our command and control server. We've created our bot. We're going to come up with some kind of clever social engineering technique so that we can distribute this bot upon the masses of um, yeah, educated, unsophisticated users. Uh, let's see here. Can I get them from here? Oh, overshot. I'm overhitting them in the back. Oh. Ah, heads up now. Yeah, I was looking at you. You had your head down. It's all good. If you fall asleep, I'll just try and throw something at you, but my aim is very, very bad, as I've just demonstrated. So here we have our bot. It's ready. It's on our web server. We have a victim in mind. We're going to target them. We're going to send out a spear phishing campaign. We do that. In the meantime, we want to know, hey, have they done it yet? And for that, that length, this length. We go to the control panel. So here's our Zeus command and control control panel. 
log in because you know you don't want to have this open up to the internet and have somebody accidentally try to take over your botnet, which has happened many times. All right, it's a pretty simple web interface. And you can see at this time, we have like one report in there because I've had one from beforehand. We don't have any bots reporting in, nothing of the sort. Let's start up another Windows box. Oh, really, thanks. So here we have our admin console, and we have some generic information about, hey, how many do we bot, what are our total number of bots, which ones have been active and been reporting in, you know, right now we have our bot configured to call back every minute. Might be a little excessive, but hey, that's fine. OS's, we're gonna have a breakdown of the various operating systems that we're seeing. Hey, are we seeing Windows XP? Are we seeing Vista? Are we seeing Windows 2000? Are we seeing, are we seeing them server OS? Because server OS's are also oh interesting. In our botnet section, hey, you know, we have some information about managing our bots. Woohoo. Do some searches, grab some reports. Scripts is really, really interesting. And we're gonna talk about scripts in just a moment here. The scripts are the various commands that you can send to the bot and have them do, have them execute. And this is really what makes this not just a password stealing Trojan at this point. Report generation, Jabber notification, hey, if you have a Jabber account, you will suddenly see a bot that's being very active and you wanna go check that one out in real time. This will let you know. System, okay, yep, yeah. like I said, PHP is there, Zen Engine's there, MySQL's there, local paths. Options, you know, hey, we set all of this initially when we set up the server, we did the install. Uh, user information, screenshot options. Screenshot options is very nice because what you're doing with the screenshot is not your own screen, but where your bot's installed. Go grab it. Bring it back, go see what that desktop looks like. Users, because hey, you know, when you're in the cyber crime enterprise, you can't be expected to be there all day. You need to have henchmen. I mean, that's what henchmen are for. Give them login accounts, give them permissions appropriate to them. So, scripts. We're gonna add a new script. This is where the user guide comes in very handy and we're going to jump back to the PowerPoint, which is all tab on this screen. Okay, interesting files. We saw the config.php, where we saw the MySQL pa root password install. Uh, two files for creation of the bot, the config.txt, the web injects, you know, how it talks, what it's gonna try and grab, what it's gonna try and do for you. Output is a bot.exe and a configuration bin. We were in VMware, we toured the interface, and now we're into scripts. Now these are the various commands that we can have our bot do. Now this is just what's scanned coming right out of the box in a vanilla implementation of Zeus. OS shutdown, OS reboot. Why in the world would you want to do that? Well, you know, maybe some features or maybe something that you else you install needs you to bounce the box afterwards. Maybe you want to try and grab the Windows credentials because forcing the user to log off, shutting them down, make them reboot, what's the next thing that's gonna happen? They're gonna authenticate Kate again. You know, if it's a screensaver, it might just be entering a password. If it's a workstation, you know, it might be typing the user ID and password again if it doesn't store the user ID. But uninstall, hey, we're done doing our evil. We're, we want to just be done with that box. We have all the information we want. Get rid of it. It's of no value. Get it off the system. Update. We can update our configuration file. We tell the bot, hey, go out there and grab it and be new and fresh and good. Um, the bot BC add and BC remove. BC is the back connect server. And this is where I was talking about it's like the netcat gender bender. If you're not familiar with that term, it's one that I saw recently, well, recently, a few years back, in a presentation by Ed Scotus on top pen testers. And essentially what it's doing is, okay, we own a box on the inside of the network, but we can't talk to it 
because it's behind a firewall, it's behind a global NAT statement, and we just can't talk to it directly, and we want to. So what we do is we say, all right, let's take this, let's install NetCat, and let's go out the door on port 80, because everybody allows port 80 out the door. That's good, you need that for browsing the web. So we connect to a server on port 80. But it's our server, and we own it, and we say, okay, well, the information that you're sending on that pipe, let's just take that and turn it around and have that send it to the application we want. So what BackConnect does for Zeus is it, grab, it just really simplifies this because that took a lot of commands to, okay, pipe the output of here to the input of here, pipe the input of here to the output of there, run it over these ports instead. So you, know, you have SSH where you pipe through. It was a mess and it was very difficult to set up. So what we got with BackConnect, what we're doing with this is, all right, bah, send traffic here on this port instead of the one that it would normally go out on. Command and control server application. I'm gonna talk back to you, this other server that we have, on a different port, and we're gonna get the information this way. And we're gonna be able to interact with the bot and really streamline this process. So what it's built in with is, for instance, VNC or RDP. So you have remote access of this machine. You tell the bot to, all right, go start up, connect here. I grab that session once you're connected, and now I'm already peed onto your box. Even though you're behind a firewall and a global NAT statement. I have your desktop, I can see it, I can do what I want with it. I can pretend I'm you, and I, since I have your banking credentials, I'm gonna go to your bank's website, and I'm gonna initiate a transfer. Not that we would do that, but it's there. And your bank's gonna go, oh, I know who this is. They're coming from an IP address that we recognize as them because we're already peeped to that box and that box is then talking back out. And it looks like it's the user doing whatever they want. So the behavior might be different for the user, but where they're coming from and the fact that they have the credentials isn't. By HTTP inject, disable, enable, let's turn it on and off the different web injects. User log off, just like what it sounds. User execute is also another great command for the bot. What you can do here is you say, okay, go and run this command. Run calc.exe and calculator.exe comes up and you can use a calculator, woohoo. But you can also specify a URL. So let's say we have a new tool that we want to use. We have a new remote administration tool that's gonna to be easier, streamlined faster, and we put it out on the internet. All right, execute, put in the URL, it automatically downloads, and it runs. We have, for instance, a Microsoft Office document. Same thing. Get cookie information, user cookies remove, uh, cert get, cert remove. Yeah, if you do have two-factor authentication using a public key infrastructure and you have a certificate installed, I can grab your credentials, I can grab your certificate, I can connect to your corporate VPN as you. Great. Blocking, unblocking URLs, any home pages. Uh, there's a bunch of FTP clients that you can pull credentials out of. Um, Flash player, uh, data information out of the cookies. Same thing. Woohoo. Back to the VM. So here we are on our exploitable, outdated, no AV running home machine. And we want to go browse the internet. We fell victim to the oh-so-enticing email to see, you know, the newest celebrities link, linked in photos that were leaked, Facebook, whatever. So, 192.168.85.129. And what we're gonna see is just the IIS start page. Excellent, we'll be. We also, underneath the root there, we taught our bot, tossed our bot.exe. Yes, it's simple, it's contrived, but you know what, in this case, it worked because we're stupid. And now that machine is infected with our Zeus bot, and within the next minute, because that's what we configured, it's gonna be talking back to our command and control server. 
So here we are, sitting at the command and control server, waiting for something to come in. Going back up to our summary, and you know, because there's that one minute wait, we're gonna be doing the do, 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 do. All right, so we're gonna wait, this bot's gonna come in, and we're gonna need to send some commands to it, we're gonna wanna do some stuff. So I did not go into a lot of details of some of the other types of functionality. I didn't really dive into the HTTP grabbing. Um, I showed you kind of the file that's there. There's a lot that you can do with it. Once again, go check out the user guide. It's a very quick Google. It really spells out what the functionality actually is. Um, there's some update functions already built into it. Yeah, awesome, awesome, wonderful stuff. And do we have a bot yet? Refresh. Hey, cool. Total bots. One. Bots active. One. 100%. Woohoo. Um, so we have our now have our bot talking back to us, and everything is great. So let's go take a look. What do we have? What information do we have? That's XP Service Pack 2. Woohoo. Uh, bots. Hey, there's one, and it's coming from this strange VMware machine name. The botnet is Gurkhan, so we can sort by that. Let's click on it. Do we want full information and screenshot? And look, there we have some full information. XP Service Pack 2, language pack, what the timestamp is, what is our latency. Well, it's very quick because it's just in VMware because this is a very contrived demo because I didn't want to try and do this over the internet. And there's our screenshot showing that we went to that IIS 7 server. If you don't believe that's real, fine. You don't have to, but it is. So everybody's good with this? We're all good? Okay, we're all doing great. And we have our screenshot. We have information. That box, because I couldn't count on the wireless, it's not going to go anywhere. There's no connection to the internet for us right now. Yeah. Otherwise, we go to a <laughs> website, pull up some authentication credentials. But sorry, guys, I just did not trust having an internet access. <laughs> you, you just feel lucky. I mean, a live demo is could go very, very tragically wrong. Look at me plug in the USB in my Windows 98 box. Okay, a couple of you got the reference. So this is all nice and good. Here we have our full information. We have our screenshots. We want it to do more. So we had a listing of a bunch of the scripts that were available, and we're going to need to set those up. I did not give you the, all the various parameters that you need to have to make those work. So for instance, the user logout command, that's very, very straightforward. The execute command where you want them to actually execute your own code or some additional code to go out to the website and get something for you. That is just a matter of putting the command in along with the appropriate parameters, enabling it, and sending it. So, let's see here. Limit on sends, you know, you want to send it how many times? The back connect server can take one session at a time and it's persistently going. So you usually want to target that at your one high-value computer that you want first. The list of bots, hey, you can get an individual bot name to put the what bot name you're targeting, and give me somebody from this bot name when they check in, you know. We're in Grand Rapids, Homo, Steelcase, Meyer, whatever campaign you want to run. If we say that, we can target them and say, okay, give me the first one there, various contacts, and then enable. So we're just going to do a very simple user log off. You can link all of these commands together and have them run through them in true script form. So if you wanted to you know, have, OK, start this, do that, and then reboot the machine, you can do that. So here's our user log off, and let's create the script. All right, there it is. User log off. It's enabled. <coughs> All right, let's click on your user log off. Excellent. We have some bot information here. 
Okay, we had sent, that's actually just now. Let's go back to here. We sent it, remember that one minute time? Well, we happen to get it very, very quickly, and we've just logged our user off. There are much more malicious scripts than that available that are out there. Much more malicious. Um, they're not necessarily in the default install. One of the commands that I really came across to, I was working in China with a coworker. We were there for three weeks. Unbeknownst to him, he had a version of Zeus installed. And for whatever reason, one week, two weeks into our work and our engagement in China, he received the kill OS command. Exactly what it sounds like. XP ceased to function at that point for him. Yeah, that kind of was a very, very bad day. For him, at least. You know, I just kind of pointed and laughed and <laughs> helped him grab a USB drive, get to a DOS prompt, and grid his data off. But there's just not much you can do at that point. So there are more malicious things that you can do if you want to be truly evil and terrible and bad. Everybody got a good feel for this. This doesn't quite match the definition that we saw from Wikipedia that simply said, hey, it grabs form information and pulls it. We're doing a lot more here. I mean, there's remote administration capabilities in here. Hey, rats. I've heard the term rat. McAfee just had this whole day on Operation Shady Rat. Great, you know. Love McAfee for that one. Um, has anybody else noticed that McAfee's press releases usually happen the week before a security conference? Night Dragon was right before RSA this year. Shady Rat was right before Black Hat. I, you know, the timing of it just says, am I supposed to really take this seriously? But that's a different conversation. So as much fun and great as looking at my uh, administrator log off screen in XP is, let's see here, anybody have any questions? Feel like they still want to throw their squishy ball at somebody at this point? Anything? No? Good? Yes? Do you have the ability to change the C2 URL? Yes, you can. So, it absolutely is. And there's, they do a couple of things that they talk to about that within uh, the configuration. When they initially set it up, one of the things that it's going to talk to is you, the two major files is you have cp.php, which is your control panel, and there's gate.php. So your machine's going to be doing a once every hour that it's on, essential ping out to the URL that has gate.php. You can change the name, but it's still going to be doing this constant ping out there. What you can do is that you have a configuration.bin file available to you, or you specified a lot of that information. You can create a new configuration.bin file, and then there's a command in here that's in the, bar, in the uh, scripts that you can just add that goes in and updates the configuration. So that was... Uh, bot update, update the bot configuration file. So you just go through that initial process where we created that new bot. You can create a new configuration bin. You put it out there where the old one is, and that's where it's telling you where the gateway PHP file is to communicate to the C2 server, the command and control server is, and you have it update there. You good? All right. Anybody else? Going? Okay. Yes. I'm just checking my time here. I think I've got a couple minutes. Okay. The question is, how would the user tell where it's stored? What can they do to find out? What can they do about it? In old versions of Zeus, older versions of Zeus, yes, there was about four different locations where that could be stored. In the newer versions of Zeus, the stuff that's now publicly available as of early part of this year, it doesn't always store it in the exact same place. It's far more random. It has more of a random fo folder name. Uh, there's still some places where you can go look at it, but it 
it's not going to be always clear. Um, the best thing to use, and the most complicated thing to use at this point, is a lot of memory forensics tools, memory analysis, to see the process running in memory. Um, volatility with some special configuration um, can go out and find that for you, and it can extract all the encryption information. So there's some cool, really powerful tools that can do it. Yes? The, I'm sorry, what? This one, up one, right there. That's the URL you're looking for? Yeah, I went looking for that the other day because I have a printed off copy of it. I just went to Google and typed in Zeus user guide. There's the URL. And it's just a you know paste HTML. Nice pages of goodness. Woohoo, very handy. All right, and I think I'm just about done. Or do I have one question left? I'm done, I'm being cut off. All right, well, I'm, and well, oh, hey, we got one more. Are these tar tax targeted, affected to the mains, or drive bys is the question. It depends. I mean, you could really use this tool to do all those things. If you want to do a targeted attack, you can use this tool. There are better tools to use targeted attacks than Zeus. A lot of what it's being used for, for the internet banking piece, which it can extend beyond that, is much more drive-by phase, much more phishing phase. You know, going for, hey, I'm the new person on the internet and I don't know what I'm doing. So it is historically been a lot more drive-by than it is targeted, but it could be used in a targeted. And that really is the last question I can take, so thank you all very much. Okay. I'm Adam Jackson. Nice talking to you. And there's my email address, Twitter feed, which I very randomly update. All right. Have a good afternoon. Bye.